60s influenced quasi psychedelic music is alive and well in 2024. Mix in some mystical Indian sounds, a dash of humor, and a little righteous indignation about the state of the world. And the result is an album that you owe it to yourself to hear. Hi everyone, I'm Paul Crayson, and you're watching Music Mentions. Today, I'll be doing a deep dive review of Kula Shaker's new album, Natural Magic. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I like to dig into a record more than most reviewers on YouTube. I'm going to give you some info about the band and its members, share some album notes with you, talk about the album title and cover, touch on some general album observations, discuss the individual songs, and then I'm going to wrap up with my overall impressions and an album rating. So who is Kula Shaker? This is an English band that was formed almost 30 years ago, back in 1995 during the height of Britpop. Their music has been described as psychedelic rock, Britpop, and Raga rock. Raga rock is rock music that has a pronounced Indian influence and was quite popular in the 60s. Bands like the Rolling Stones and the Birds both dabbled in this sound, but it was George Harrison's embracing of Indian sounds on Beatles records that's probably the best well-known example. Their name, Kula Shaker, comes from a 9th century Indian emperor called King Kula Shekhara. Kula Shaker released two albums before breaking up in 1999. Their amazing debut album, K, generated some minor hits. At the time, it became the best-selling debut album in the UK since Oasis's Definitely Maybe. However, a cover version of the song Hush, made famous by Deep Purple, became their most commercially successful song, and it was actually included on the soundtrack for the movie I Know What You Did Last Summer. The band reformed in 2006 and has been intermittently active since. Their last release, titled First Congregational Church of Eternal Love and Free Hugs, was released in 2022, one of my favorite albums from that year. Otherwise, this band has really flown under the radar from the music mainstream, especially in hip-hop and pop-obsessed America. But they have continued to maintain a strong core following, and they're known for really fun and high-energy live shows. Let's discuss the band members. Crispin Mills, he's 51 years old. He's the lead vocalist, he's the guitarist, the main songwriter, and the leader of the band. He also happens to be the son of Haley Mills, the famous actress from the 60s that starred in six Disney movies, most famously The Parent Trap from 1961. His interest in Indian spirituality explains the Indian-tinged influences on Kula Shaker albums. Then we have Alonzo Bevan. He's 53 years old. He's the band's bassist, plays some piano on the album, a little acoustic guitar, and also has some co-songwriting credits on the record. Next, we have Paul Winter Hart. He's 52 years old. He's the band's drummer, and he's also played in various lesser-known rock bands in England, including Zero Point Field and Gold Ray. And finally, we have Jay Darlington. He's 55 years old and is the band's keyboardist. After the band broke up in 1999, he became the touring keyboardist for Oasis. If you saw Oasis live in the 2000s, you invariably saw Jay playing keyboards for them. Noel Gallagher would sometimes call Jay Jesus Christ because of his long hair and his beard. Natural Magic is actually the first Kula Shaker album since their temporary breakup to feature all four original members of the band now that Jay has come back. Some additional musicians were also brought in to fill out the sound on the album by playing tabla, uh, strings, sitar, and some background vocals on various tunes. Let's switch over to some quick album notes. Natural Magic was released on February 2nd of 2024. It's Kula Shaker's seventh studio album. It was released on Strange Folk Records and co-produced by Crispin and Alonza, along with Kevin Nixon, who used to be a manager for Kula Shaker early on and is back on the current management team. 
The album was written on the road, and the songs were honed during their live performances. Let's discuss the track listing in some lengths. So, we've got 13 songs on this record. Happy Birthday is the longest song at 4 minutes and 29 seconds. I Don't Want to Pay My Taxes is the shortest at 2 minutes and 40 seconds. The songs are all fairly short in that 3 to maybe 4 and a half minute range. And the total album length is somewhere around 46 and a half minutes long. Let's switch over to the album title and the cover. The album title is Natural Magic and comes from the name of one of the songs. Magic here is in an archaic spelling with the inclusion of that K at the end. This was the spelling that was used during the Renaissance, and it's the spelling that was revived by Aleister Crowley to distinguish occult magic from stage magic. Natural magic sometimes uses things like stones and herbs from the natural world, as opposed to ceremonial magic, which involves conjuring of spirits. The title certainly matches up with the general mystical-esque air and feeling of the album. The album covers an explosion of bright colors and depicts various items mentioned in the lyrics. The central figure is Ganesha, the elephant-headed Hindu god of beginnings, who is traditionally worshipped before any major enterprise and is the patron of intellectuals, bankers, scribes, and authors. On the cover, Ganesha also has an open third eye and is wearing an ornate headdress. Butterfly wings are emerging from behind the god and include more eyes along with some colored lips, some fish, a peace symbol, mushrooms, and a record player. There are also hummingbirds flying around on either side. Ganesha is also holding what looks to be a bowl of gulab jamun, a traditional Indian sweet dessert. Gulab jamun is often eaten at festivals, birthdays, or major celebrations such as marriages. The right hand is held up displaying that famous Om Hindu religious symbol. Like several of Kula Shaker's previous album covers, this one has tons of things going on and many small details that are best seen by having the vinyl version of the album. It's a beautifully busy and colorful album cover that speaks to the vibrancy and Indian influences found in the music. Now for some general album observations. Both the recording quality and the mix are great. It sounds like a modern day rock album, but there's also a lot of error around the instruments. No complaints at all about the sound here. There's a very strong 60s vibe to the record, and you'll be constantly trying to remember where you've heard these uh, certain melody lines before. It's a smorgasbord of influences doused in occasional Indian musical touches. There's really no other modern record that quite sounds like it. There are three songs from the album that were released as singles prior to the album being released. Now let's start focusing on the individual songs, starting with Gaslighting. The album starts with what sounds like someone twisting a dial for a good radio station to land on. Then we're hit with a punchy kinks-like all day and all the night riff, and then Crispin speaks, kind of raps, this introduction of intent into the microphone as if he's a preacher. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here to witness the great congregation in this Aquarian age of communication and rehumanization. The revolution will not be live-streamed across all social platforms. You will receive no notifications, only dehypnotizations, revelations, and realizations. Although this rocking and topical song is addressing the modern breakdown of communications, Gaslighting, after all, is the intentional manipulation of someone into questioning their own perception of reality. This intro is about reversing that gaslighting trend. It's a song of hope amidst the chaos. A lot of what makes Kula Shaker special is the organ sound, and here it's really prominent in the choruses with these forceful guitar stabs like exclamation marks. Really makes the song swing. Then, somewhere in the middle of the song, Alonza takes over talk singing a verse before being handed back to Crispin. Crispin, again, kind of 
speaks slash raps a great bridge section towards the end of the tune. Here are the lyrics. Satanic mills, corporate chills footing the bills. Deceivers, non-believers, golden retrievers. Black magic witches sticking us for bitches. We know that their judgment will come. Because love is the answer, love is the flower, love is the source for spiritual power. The way that Crispin delivers the first four lines kind of reminded me of the way Bono spoke slash sang in the U2 song, Bullet the Blue Sky. But it's those last two lines here that really pack a wallop as Crispin doesn't mince words and straight up tells us that love is the answer. Gaslighting is a perfect start to the album. The song slams, the guitar and organ sound forceful, and the positivity amidst the insanity is a breath of fresh air in this day and age. Song number two is Waves. This was the first single. It's a very 60s sound again and a very upbeat and peppy tune. It's the first time that we are hit with a little Indian influence in the form of a sitar sound, but it's really more of a flavoring than the main dish. There's even a little Bo Diddley type guitar break in it. Although the melody is very catchy, especially in the choruses with their sha na na lines, the overall song seems to be a bit light and doesn't quite have the heft or impact of gaslighting. This song was released in the middle of the summer last year and it definitely sounds like a light and happy summer song. This is one of those international songs, as Crispin mentions, making waves all over the globe like London, Tokyo, and Mexico. Let's take a look at that first verse. When the witching hour comes, when the demon starts to run, and in this time of great unrest, you are loved, and darling, you are blessed. It seems that we're continuing with lyrical concepts from gaslighting to a certain extent. We've got demons and great unrest, but Crispin again reassures us with positivity that we are loved and blessed. It's interesting that they released this as the first single, since I think it's one of the weaker songs on the record. It just doesn't have enough meat on the bones for me. It's not terrible by any means, and isn't necessarily a skipper, but it's just not very memorable. Song number three is Natural Magic. This was the third single. Now we're talking with this disco-influenced dance track. We're in the late 70s with this one. The song boogies with its prominent rhythm section and fun guitar lines and that fabulous organ. It even sounds like there's some horns on this one. There's really no Indian flavor here, and it's not really a psychedelic song. Let's take a gander at the lyrics from the first verse. You got that old-time magic, and it's making my day. You got the technicolor and the special K. Coke cans, newsstands passing me by. You set the streets on fire, and I feel so alive. This song appears to be about Crispin telling his love interest why he digs her. During the choruses, he keeps telling her that she's got a natural magic. Not magic with a K in this case. By the way, speaking of K, the special K mentioned in the second line here might be a reference to ketamine that some folks call special K. This is a fun and memorable song that will earworm its way into your brain and will make you want to get up and get your groove on. Throw this one on at your next dance party. Song number four is Indian Record Player. This was the second single, another happy and upbeat tune with a 60s influence, hand claps, and a fuzzy guitar. There are also some strings, and it even has a section that kind of sounds like Miserloo by Dick Dale, which was made famous in the movie Pulp Fiction. There's a strong Indian influence here, but it's primarily relegated to the lyrics, as Crispin literally is singing about an old Indian record player and many Indian music artists he plays on it. Additionally, there's a mention of Bollywood. I was also reminded of the 90s Indian-influenced band Corner Shop. I'm not sure what I think about this song. It almost comes off as a novelty song that you're just supposed to have some fun with and not take too seriously. The best part of the song is the arrangement and production, but overall this one is kind of disposable for me. Really surprising that they would have released it as a single. It 
probably would have made more sense as a B-side to a single. Song number five is Chura Lea, You Stole My Heart. This is the only cover song on the album, and it's an actual Indian Hindi love song from a 1973 Bollywood film. A wonderful Bangladeshi singer and voice artist whose name is Labani Barua and who resides in the UK sings this song as a duet with Crispin. It's actually a really cool track and is just something you're not going to find on your traditional rock album. The instrumentation and production is fantastic as the guitar adds some bite to the tune in certain places. It really works well in the context of a full album listen and instills in the album that Indian vibe. It's obvious to me that Crispin's love of Indian music supersedes any commercial intent he may have. He wants to spread this music to more people and make them aware of it. You could call this self-indulgent, but I really think it works here. Song number six is Something Dangerous. We have another 60s influence tune here that has no drums, mostly just percussion, hand claps, uh, bass, and an acoustic guitar. There's some strings thrown in, and there's a harmonica that makes an appearance as well. There's an Indian influence here, but it's mostly with the background vocals and spots. The song is an interesting mixture of Beatles, Monkeys, and Simon and Garfunkel with some nice strong melodies and a little psychedelic imagery. Here are the lyrics from the second verse. She was posing for the camera for the wicked witch's toad who forgot to make her dinner so she threw it in the road when a chocolate-colored vision painted armor shining bright plucked her up out of the gutter and then galloped out of sight. If you just showed me these lyrics and asked me to guess what decade they were from, my instant answer would be the 60s, and I'd say they reminded me of something like Jefferson Airplane. They certainly read that way. Anyway, uh, Crispin also mentions that there's something dangerous inside of him during the first chorus, but it's really not clear what that is. This is a cool little time machine kind of song from the 60s that... No one does anymore, and I dig it. Song number seven is Stay With Me Tonight. We slow things down here. This is a love song and a slow dancer with a latter-day Beatles guitar line that will catch your ear. It's also another duet with a singer named Alanud Gigante who adds a lovely touch to the proceedings. There's no Indian or psychedelic influence to be found other than touches from a wah-wah guitar. The melodies are great, and Crispin's vocals are a highlight. The instrumental bridge is also very Beatles-y. This is another song in the great tradition of rock songs that try to convince a love interest to spend the night together with the singer. There's really not much more to the lyrical content. It's a lovely song, and it's a nice change of pace on the album. Song number eight is called Happy Birthday. This song is exactly what its title implies. It's a little upbeat happy birthday song that brings back Labani Barua sharing vocals with Crispin. The first minute or so are some bird noises and a little churalia back in the mix, and then it becomes a psychedelic celebratory song with a strong Indian vibe and includes many lyrics in Hindi and even calls out the uh, Hari Krishna a few times. It does what Kula Shaker are really great at, which is melding the Indian with the traditional rock. The instrumentation is fantastic, as is the production and the melodies. I love Jay's playing on the organ here. It's such a classic Kula Shaker sound. It's a pretty dynamic track with a build up to a peak somewhere in the middle of the song and then it calms back down again. It's a great track. Song number nine is I Don't Want to Pay My Taxes. We've got a rocker here with a very topical and political subject matter. It's the shortest song on the album. Once again, the organ is a highlight as well, and the guitar, which gets to freak out a little bit. It also gives a nod to the mighty ACDC at a certain point. You'll know what I mean when you listen to this one. Let's take a look at that first verse. I don't want to pay my taxes. I don't want to pay for World War III. I don't want to pay my taxes. 
I don't need no man to die for me. Ain't nobody played with matches, never got their fingers burned. Crispin is singing that he doesn't want to pay his taxes, but very specifically because he doesn't want to fund World War III. In this current age of wars that seemingly keep breaking out but rarely end, this is probably a sentiment that many peace-loving people can embrace with open arms. It's another song with the signature Kula Shaker sound, and it's a favorite of mine on the album. Next we have F-Bombs. This song is a real groover that starts out with a drum beat and Crispin speaking into the microphone again instead of singing. Actually, there's really no singing on it. This is a Kula Shaker rap song at the heart of it. But it's a rap song is filtered through Beck, you know, one of Beck's early hits like Loser or Where It's At. There's a repeating melodic line that doesn't let up uh, after the initial song intro, and you'll be bopping your head to the groove it establishes. We even get a nice freak-out instrumental about two-thirds of the way in. The title should be taken literally, as there are quite a few F-bombs thrown at us. But the title can also be interpreted as Fuck Bombs, as this is an overtly anti-war song. It doesn't have the weight of something like Edwin Starr's famous song, War. You know, the one that goes, War, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. But it's born of the same sentiment. Let's take a look at a few of the verses. Fuck war, because they're taking the peace. Fuck war, and we all getting fleeced. Fuck war, better empty your pockets. Well, who else is going to pay for the Tomahawk Rockets? This is a song that bludgeons you over the head with its message, but it's meant to be direct and in your face. I have to say I do admire bands that stand by their principles and address hot-button issues like this. It's another unusual tune on this album with the rapping and offbeat arrangement, but it works for me and it's another one that I really dig. Song number 11 is Whistle and I Will Come. Here we have another interesting one. This song was co-written with Jake Gosling, an English record producer and songwriter who's worked with some heavy hitters like Lady Gaga and Ed Sheeran. This song starts off with some whistling, reminiscent of Ennio Marconi or Guns N' Roses' Civil War. Then it goes into what is probably the most straight-ahead rock song on the album. The melody sounds familiar, but that's just par for the course these days. Everything sounds like something else. Regardless, this song is very catchy and melodic and wonderfully produced. The lyrical content is straightforward as Crispin sings about wanting his lover, who appears to have left him, to come back to him. It's one of the better songs on the album, even if it doesn't have that classic Kula Shaker sound to it. Song number 12 is California Blues, another one with a strong 60s vibe, especially the guitar sound. This one starts off with a little humorous spoken word in intro by a female voice pretending to be a flight attendant. Then we get the song kicking in with a repeating descending guitar line and drums kicking in. The bass has a little prominence here, too. I would classify this as a mid-tempo rocker, but it feels a little laid back, too. Let's take a look at the chorus. I ran away from California, kickback dreams of love and laughter. I ran away from my California blues. It appears that this song is about leaving California for something better. In this case, it's London, and then wishing to be back in California. There doesn't seem to be more to it than that. It's interesting to point out that the spelling of California with a K in the song title can be interpreted as a reference to the Kali, uh, the goddess of darkness, destruction, and death, but she is also a symbol of Mother Nature. So yes, there's an Indian reference in the lyrics, but not really in the music itself. This is another strong song on the album. A lot of that credit can go to the chorus, which is sunny, melodic, and beautiful. And we arrive at the final song, Give Me Tomorrow. The album closer is a slowed down tune with an almost 50s or maybe an early 60s thing going on. A prominent feature of this song is the slide guitar that really solidifies the sense you're in a time warp. It's the song you slow dance to at a sock hop. 
Crispin's singing is probably some of the best on the album. Here's the chorus. Give me tomorrow. Hold me in your arms. Call me your sweetheart just like you did before. When all the love was in your eyes, love be my sunshine. It's another song about love, but here it appears to be a fading or faded love that Crispin is trying to salvage. If I didn't know any better, given some similar lyrics on the album, it seems that Crispin's love life has been a struggle of late. I guarantee that this song will sound familiar to you. If you have some ideas of what it was influenced by, let me know in the comments. Let's see what musical touchstones you guys can come up with. It really doesn't have the signature Kula Shaker sound to it, but it's a fine album closer, especially the last line of the song when someone whispers to us a final message of, let love be your sunshine. Now let me summarize my thoughts on natural magic. The first thing to know is that this is not the same Kula Shaker that made that classic debut album K back in the 90s. K has an edge and an energy and psychedelia that natural magic just can't muster. However, this doesn't make this new album not worth listening to. There are still enough traditional Kula Shaker sounds on this album to make longtime listeners of the band happy. Another thing I'd like to note is that though there are some similar lyrical themes that go across songs on this record, this is not what I'd call a cohesive record. It flows just fine, but there's such a difference between how many of these songs sound that the way to think about it is this is an album of individual tunes. There's really no central concept that holds everything together. The previous album to Natural Magic had a much more uh, cohesive and uh, conceptual nature to it. Still, this is a great listen. And it warms my heart that this band is still active and making music nearly 30 years on. It's an album for those of you out there that are lamenting the current state of rock music and have given up on expecting anything decent from modern bands. The record's got some great melodies and arrangements, and many of these songs would have likely been hits in previous decades. One other thing I'd like to point out. Kula Shaker really consider themselves to be a live band first and foremost. And if you have the chance to see them live, you don't want to pass that up. Their shows are absolutely a blast and they're just not to be missed. Now let's turn to my rating. I'm giving this album a 7.5 out of 10. There are more hits than misses on it and I encourage all my viewers to give this one a spin. Now, I know that your mileage may vary. Let me know what you guys think of this record. I'm really curious, especially you older rockers. Does this kind of bring back some of that good 60s, 70s vibe? Let me know in the comments. Thanks again, everyone, for watching my video. I know this was another long one and you made it to the end. I truly appreciate that. And I appreciate everyone that watches these videos and my channel. If you like this kind of content, hit the like button, hit the subscribe and notifications. I will catch you cats next time.